Well, very simply, it's the uterus or the embryo. It's sort of a chicken or egg argument. And in general, it's usually the embryo's fault. And I say that because before we ever do an embryo transfer, we've evaluated the female. We've looked at her uterus with a hysteroscopy. We've usually made sure the tubes are open with an HSG. We've done a 3D ultrasound. We've measured uterine blood flow. We know the lining of the uterus is thick enough to receive an embryo and that the hormones, particularly progesterone, are sufficient to allow implantation. So we sort of go into the procedure with the argument the uterus, it would appear, is proven to work. And then when the embryo doesn't attach, it's generally the fault of the embryo. Um, and that's confusing because when patients are called and told you have a chromosomally normal embryo, they think, well, normal is good. You can't get better than normal in medicine. A normal chest X-ray is good. But the embryo being chromosomally normal may still be stressed. It may be slow growing. It may not have a lot of cells. And once we thaw it and put it back in the uterus, it may be so stressed that it doesn't keep dividing. And of course, it's not gonna latch on or as they say, implant because of the embryo's viability, not any fault of the uterus. So most of the time, it's an embryo issue. And one interesting study over the last couple of years looked at this very question. If you have a failed transfer, what if you do nothing different to the woman except do another transfer? The pregnancy rate is the same, even though she failed. And after three transfers, the cumulative success rate was over 90%, which means less than 10% of the time, it was the uterus's fault, because if it was the uterus, the second and third cycle would never work either. And yet, simply putting back and giving another embryo a chance uh, gets about 90% of patients pregnant over three tries.